shaitan rajeem, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Raheem, Ati Allah, Ati Rasul wa ulil amri minkum. And always a reminder for myself and Abdul Qadhaji Sadaifu, Miskeen, Zalim, Jahad, and but for the grace of Allah that we are still in existence and the immensity of this reality of light and the world of light, and that every creation that comes into existence is from Muhammadun Rasulullah And we've described before the mulk and the world of form and from that form it breaks down. That form breaks down to atoms, these atoms break down to lights, these lights break down to sounds and these sounds break down to energy. And all of that is Muhammadun Rasulullah So, liwal hamd, because people don't put that into perspective, so when we're being taught these realities that we say, okay form, for form to exist it must have atoms. Those atoms are existing and they found that when they reduce to subatomic realities it's light, bosoms I think they called it. These lights for them to be existing they found them to be in vibrations and that was this string theory. And that's when Allah says, Yusabbihu wa bihamdi, no one understand it except the people of tafakkur and for verily everything is in praise, Yusabbihu wa bihamdi. Bi Hamdi, that everything is in hamd and as a result these vibrations are an energy. These energies are manifesting. So the title of Prophet one is the walham, the flag of praise. So that means in, in which praise? is Prophet making all this to exist and all of this creation is manifesting. For Allah says, if I praise it would be qashiya, it would be dust. So means that all this creation is in existence by the praise of Sayyidina Muhammad and that's why liwal hamd is such an immense, immense reality that you are the, the flag of praise. And Surah Fatiha is the reality of that praise, means Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen. It's all about praise, the Surah of Hamd, Surah Al Hamd. It's the surah of praise because it's the description and the realities in Sayyidina Muhammad And Allah is the might and the majesty in the heart of that creation. Because Allah not, not to be seen, Allah is hidden treasure wanting to be known but stressing it's hidden. Means you'll know the alamat and the signs, you'll know the signs of Allah but never a direction towards Allah La shariq, there's nothing unto our Lord, there's nothing like unto our Lord, there's, there's nothing that's like even the likeness of the Lord, the Creator Almighty. But these are the signs of that reality. So means then every manifestation and non-manifestation, atomic and subatomic is all in the light of Muhammadun Rasulullah So that's immense. So anything manifesting is manifesting with Muhammadun Rasulullah That's why the power of the kalima and the reality of the eleven. So this one of creation whether it's mulki wa malakut, one is, is mulk and malakut. One of Allah is nothing to do with creation. So it means there's a creation you see 
the world of manifestation. But then the creation of the heavens in which you don't see, doesn't mean Allah's there, it's still creation. One that manifests with our physical understanding and one that does not manifest with our physical understanding but it is manifesting with our spiritual. That's why people can with their spiritual ability they can see the heavens, they can see that which doesn't manifest of the souls who passed away and the angels. So that's all in dimension of light. Everything in existence is a light whether it's being seen or not seen and or seen by not seen by certain eyes that was in the understanding. So you make a teardrop of light and the outermost ring is electromagnetic frequency. The jinn, the light, the television signals, the fluorescent tubes. But light has many infinite spectrums. There's a spectrum of light that's infrared signal that your TV remote uses to change TV channels, uses to turn on devices into the house. There's a spectrum of light, the gamma ray in which it's radioactive and has particles and can be toxic. There are infinite spectrums of light, all of them Muhammadun Rasulullah So it means the, the ocean of light is something that is infinite in its understanding and immense in its reality. To enter to that light, to enter into that reality, to reach to these lights requires for us to break the form. That's why melt the form. If you melt the form you begin to move towards your subatomic reality. As you begin to melt your subatomic reality in your subatomic and your atomic reality then these understandings become more clear. In the world of form philosophers ask that, oh could there be a God or stuff or could there not be a God? Because they see the world in its separation. So you got 50 people in a room and, oh look we're all separate, we came here randomly. But that's not how to view the reality. The reality is then go to your atomic reality. And that everybody sitting in that room has a nucleus and electrons. And where are those nucleuses and electrons? For you to be appearing your nucleus if it was where your physicality is your electron would be outside of the scope of this earth closer to the moon. Means the atomic reality is so vast compared to our size and the understanding of size. The distance between the nucleus and the electron on an atom would be for us to understand the science of it would be like us being the nucleus and the moon being the electron. That's how vast our creation is, huge in its size, huge in its size. So imagine how 50 of you are there, you think your electrons are randomly flying around and no one is exploding because that would be a, like an atomic bomb. If people's electrons were all colliding they can't even make this hydrogen collider to collide. If everybody just random and life was random all of our elements would be smashing into each other in every random case of, of a catastrophe. But no Allah describes it's all perfectly in an orbit. Means you can't move unless Allah give you a permission of movement. As a result of that movement everything must be on tracks, moving fast at the rate of your intention Allah provides a step. So it means then through tafakkur you go to your atomic reality and the vastness of creation and its understandings begin to open. But no of course there has to be a creator otherwise who's moving all of these elements? Who's making everything to, to move and to happen without collisions and calamities and catastrophes? You can't get 20 cars into an area without them hitting each other, more or less the electrons. And what's the speed of the movement of electrons? At what, what huge and immense speed do they move? So it means then you break your form, you begin to understand 
the atomic reality. And in that atomic reality becomes our meditation of light and we begin to understand that I'm a, a light being and in that light being is where all the conveyance of knowledges and realities and the light has no time and the light is everywhere and everything is connected and that becomes the ocean of singularity. So where we are all separate the world is all, the world of light is all connected. So that's the immensity of the world of light. That's why our shaqeen when they took a life of meditating, contemplating, losing their form, breaking down the reality of the form, what happened? The ocean of immense love opened for them because they saw everything as an ocean of singularity. They saw everything is in an ocean of this immense light and it's all in that ocean. Good, bad, indifferent, it's all in this ocean of light with its immense beauty, immense praise. And that's why Ashaqeen because of the world of light they understood the reality of love. They understood the reality that all this light is manifesting from Divine Love and each has its own zikr that makes it to appear in the world of form as it appears. But when that appearance goes what remains is that light in the ocean of one light and it's all in a Divine praise. And that one whom praising because it's all in in the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah all creation, all lights, every color, anything in existence and non-existence is inside Muhammadun Rasulullah It's immense, very difficult for people to, to comprehend with the head, it's not something for the head, it's something for people to understand through their tafakkur and through their contemplation and how to reach towards that reality by bringing the reality of the form down, the necessity of the head to be brought down, relying upon love and Divine Love and the heart. And once they build that love, nourish that love they become a servant of that love. And that's what's important, that's what sets the internal journey apart from external journey. The people whom their journey is on the surface, it's all about right and wrong and the do's and don'ts and this one's bad, this one is good. And the internal journey of the one whom struggled and broke and brought down their form they realize that they entered into an ocean of light and everything is from that light. And that light was brought into existence and is in existence by a praise. And that praise is based on love and muhabbat. And as a result they became servants of that love. And that love never leaves them alone. That what we quoted last night, love never leaves you alone, Divine Love. It's such an important goal for us to be achieving that in these days of difficulty, these days of sadness and sorrow and disappointments, when we move towards that love and nourish that love and the ishq and the love for Allah and He reflects us to love Sayyidina Muhammad in the reality of Prophet is Jesus, is Moses, is Abraham, is Noah, is Adam, all of them are in Muhammadun Rasulullah So it's the love of all the Prophets. When we love them more than we love ourselves, that love will never leave you alone. That love nourishes everything that you do and every difficulty that we face in love, in life that love is with us, accompanying us and dressing us. The immensities of, of this Divine Mirror is something that can't be understood. But when everything is Muhammadun Rasulullah it's power, 
is La ilaha illallah. But because of the adab and the manners is don't direct yourself towards La ilaha illallah but to be known and to love the reality of Muhammadun Rasulullah As a result the reality of La ilaha illallah will begin to dress you with Divine love, Divine grace and, as you, and that's the secret of Lam Alif. As we move closer to Muhammadun Rasulullah what happens then? This reflection of Lam Alif which is the Zulfiqar we described was at the beginning of the gate. Why Imam Ali Salam holds a Zulfiqar? Because he's teaching us, I hold this reality of Lam Alif that in your life that you run for the Lam and the Alif will appear. If you run for the alif, the lamb will appear. Hmm. Right? Means those who run for Allah and they think everything's about Allah, Allah will correct them that I'm not so easy for you to reach. And you go back and begin to understand who is Muhammadun Rasulullah. As a result of that love then Allah directed them to Muhammadun Rasulullah and as they approach and as they approach and as they approach who did they find in that reality? They found La ilaha illallah because that was the immensity of the love, that was the immensity of these realities. That when you praise upon Prophet you're doing the dhikr of Allah Because Allah in Allah wa malaikatuhu yusalloon ala nabi That verily Allah and His angels they pray and praise upon Sayyidina Muhammad That's the dhikr of Allah So alhamdulillah so many immense realities of this Divinely mirror and to carry the Zulfiqar and the custodians of the gate, the Bab, that they carry the Zulfiqar, they carry the realities of La ilaha illallah, Muhammadun Rasulullah and their responsibility is to bring people to the two oceans where they meet. And if they take from the two oceans where they meet means they drink from that fountain of reality. They are the people of the who where La ilaha illallah who Muhammadun Rasulullah And as a result of drinking from that fountain of who and all its realities it is the fountain of life, it is the fountain of ishq and every eternal reality. We pray that Allah address us and bless us from the immensity of their teachings and their realities and bring us and open our hearts to understand inshaAllah. Subhana rabbika rabbil izzati amma yasifoon, salaamun al mursaleen, alhamdulillahi rabbil alameen, bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa, bi siri Surat al-Fatiha.